In this video, we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to install and commission the multi-hall V-band or 60 GHz point-to-multipoint multi-gigabit radio. A multi-hall point-to-multipoint system consists of a base unit serving as an access point and multiple terminal units or CPEs. It uses a beam-forming integrated antenna to auto-align, making installation a lightning-quick one-person job. The beamforming technology combines a wide, 90-degree scanning angle with pencil beams, maximizing coverage while minimizing interference. Additional base units may be installed to achieve 180, 270, or 360-degree coverage. These are the tools you'll need for the installation. A 13mm hex socket or equivalent open wrench to open the multi-hall caps, a medium head Phillips screwdriver to ground the multi-haul, a 7mm hex socket or equivalent open end wrench to mount the bracket and the multi-haul unit. Unpack the base unit and its accessories. The box contains the radio, a pre-assembled mounting bracket, POE injector, ground cable, three sets of protective all-weather shells, and two self-locking bands. The mounting bracket is suitable for any pole size between 1 inch up to 12 inches using the proper bands to hold it. We supply two scalable self-locking bands suitable for a maximum pole diameter of 12 inches. Alternatively, the bracket may be installed on the wall. Here is the front panel of the multi-hall base unit. The unit has two RJ45 Ethernet ports and one fiber port. Port 1 is used for data as well as PoE in for powering up the multi-hall. Currently supporting 1 gig E Ethernet, models with 2.5 gig E 802.3 BZ will be available in the future. Port 2 is used for both data and PoE out. Port 3 is used for fiber connection. 1 gig E Ethernet or 2.5 gig E SFP may be used. A utility push button is located next to port 1. Pressing the button for 10 seconds will clear the multi-hall settings to the factory default. Install the mounting bracket to a fixed and stable reinforced steel mounting pole with the self-locking steel bands according to the pole diameter using the 7mm hex socket tool. The multi-hall antenna sector coverage is 90 degrees horizontally and 20 degrees vertically. Optimize the azimuth alignment by turning the mounting bracket left or right, targeting the center of the 90-degree sector. Once the optimum alignment is achieved, fasten the bands to secure the bracket to the pole. Unlock the four elevation lock bolts in order to allow free movement of the radio. Optimize the elevation alignment and once optimum alignment is achieved, fasten the bolts to secure the radio. Should higher vertical angles be required, Use C-Clue's EHMKSM mounting kit, which allows for up to plus or minus 60 degrees of elevation. The multi-hall may also be mounted on a wall. Disassemble the mounting bracket from the radio and attach it to the wall using suitable screws. Reassemble the radio to the bracket and fasten the bolts to secure the radio. Note that there is no horizontal panning when mounting the bracket on a wall, so the remote end must be within the 90 degree scanning range. Once optimum alignment is achieved, fasten the bolts to secure the radio to the bracket. The radio must be grounded using a copper cable of at least 16 gauge and in accordance with local electrical codes. All cables connected to the radio should be shielded and terminated by metallic connectors. Cables should be outdoor grade category 5E or above with UV protection. It is recommended to use surge protectors on the Ethernet cables to protect them from surges caused by lightning and from power fluctuations. Indoor and outdoor surge protectors are available for purchase from c -Clue. Three sets of protective all-weather shells are provided in each box. Select a rubber gasket that best fits the Ethernet cable diameter. Each gasket fits a different cable diameter, ranging from 3.5 mm to 9 mm. Note that the rubber gasket is spliced and can be assembled on cables with connectors. Connect the Ethernet cable to port 1 of the radio.
Hand tighten the all-weather shells. Do not use tools to secure them. The radio can be powered on using the PoE injector connected to port 1 of the radio. Plug the Ethernet cable into the data and power port of the PoE device. The power LED lights orange and then blinks green until the multi-hull is fully booted, a process which takes about 30 seconds. Verify that the power LED is green, indicating that the multi-hull is on. To power up the radio using direct DC power, use an RJ45 to DC adapter. Note that in this case, port 1 will be used for power only. Ethernet to DC adapters can be purchased from CCLU separately. Now we can proceed with the installation of the terminal units at the remote sites. Three CPE types are available. The CTU, a compact terminal unit, has a smaller footprint and contains one gigabit Ethernet port. The terminal unit with one gigabit Ethernet port and a similar terminal unit having three ports. These terminal units are interchangeable and can be mixed and matched in the same sector associated with the same base unit. Let's start with unboxing the compact TU. The box contains the following a compact terminal unit radio, an indoor PoE injector with AC power cord, two UV-rated zip ties to mount the CTU to a pole, one small zip tie to secure the Ethernet cable inside the CTU, and an installation and setup guide, including a wall mount stencil. Open the CTU cover to expose the front panel. The unit has one RJ45 Ethernet port for data as well as PoE in for powering up the CTU. A utility push button. A short press will reboot the unit while pressing and holding the button for 10 seconds will clear the multi-hall settings to the factory defaults. A power LED, which illuminates green when the radio is fully booted. An RF LED, which illuminates green while an RF link is being established with the base unit and an Ethernet 1 LED, indicating Ethernet connectivity, orange for 100 meg and green for 1 gig connections. Since the CTU is made of a non-conductive material, grounding is not required. However, a grounding point exists for installation scenarios in very specific extreme conditions. The CTU can be mounted on a pole or on a wall. Use the two supplied zip ties to attach the CTU to the pole. Adjust the azimuth alignment by turning the CTU left or right, targeting the base unit. Once optimum alignment is achieved, fasten the zip ties to the pole. Note that there is no elevation panning. For wall mount, use the provided stencil to mark the holes on the wall. Detailed hole diameters can be found in the installation guide. Make sure to use the right screws according to the wall material. Screws are not provided with the kit. Connect the Ethernet cable to port 1 of the radio. Tighten the zip tie to the Ethernet cable. The CTU can now be powered on using the supplied PoE injector. Plug the Ethernet cable into the PoE port. The power LED lights orange and then blinks green until the radio is fully booted, a process which takes about 30 seconds. Once the green RF LED is lit, Reassemble the cover on the box, ensuring the weatherproofing gasket is in place. Use a small head Phillips screwdriver to lock it. Unpack the terminal unit and its accessories. The terminal unit box contains the radio, a pre-assembled mounting bracket, PoE injector, ground cable, up to three sets of protective all-weather shells, and two self-locking bands. The number of protective all-weather shells included, one or three, depends on which terminal unit was ordered. When installing the terminal unit, point it at the base unit. Remember the remote base unit must be within the 90 degree horizontal and 20 degree vertical scanning range of the antenna. Optimize the azimuth and elevation alignments the same way you did for the base unit. Once optimum alignment is achieved, fasten the bands and the lock bolts. Power up the terminal unit. Once fully booted, the power LED will be green. 
the system's scanning antenna will automatically align the beams for optimal performance. Verify that the RF LED is green, indicating a proper connection or link-up. Any kind of data can now be transparently streamed over the radio link between the base and terminal units. Once done, proceed to the location of the next terminal unit. Repeat these steps for the remaining terminal units. For more information, please visit us at cclue.com. Thank <laughs> you.